One of my best friends is Ukrainian. Her name is Anastasia Kuchirenko. She is a PhD student in computer science at EPFL. And she might be the kindest, happiest, and most enthusiastic person I know until recently. The invasion of Ukraine devastated her. She has been crying so much. She couldn't eat, she couldn't sleep, and she couldn't stop worrying as so many of her friends and relatives stayed in Ukraine where the war is unfortunately still going on. In fact, one of the girls she taught math to died from the war. War is tragic. War is inhumane. Not only for the thousands of people who already died, but also for the millions of Ukrainians who have suddenly become homeless. A few weeks ago, Anastasia found the incredible courage and energy to share her experience in EPFL's three-minute thesis competition. Again, I cannot stress enough how hard it was for her. Even hours before the talk, she was so exhausted mentally and physically that she was doubting she could do it. But she did it, and she did amazingly well. Without further ado, let me play the fantastic and heartbreaking talk she gave.
I have put Anastasia's script in the description as well as numerous sources to back up her claims. Please check them out. I cannot stress enough how alarming today's mass disinformation is, as well as the calls for hate, violence, and even genocide. We are undergoing a mass disinformation world war. And as Anastasia said, while this is ongoing, no one is safe. Unfortunately, currently, the overwhelming majority of us is far from caring sufficiently about this mass disinformation war, even within the scientific community, and even in computer science. I'm highlighting computer science in particular because computer scientists too often forget, to my greatest frustration, that they are studying none other than the science of information processing and information communication. As a community, whether we like it or not, we are empowering the information technologies that are being dangerously hijacked by disinformation war campaigns. It is completely wrong for us to carry on with our daily work as usual, while clearly so much of our technologies, so much of the technologies that we contribute to develop, are being used by warlords to spread hate, manipulate people's beliefs, and harass their critics through what I call psychological bombing. Another friend of mine is undergoing a very dangerous full-scale psychological bombing for standing up for peace and truth, but I will talk more about him another time. Alarmingly, we already saw exactly how criminal Mark Zuckerberg has behaved by facilitating human trafficking and encouraging hate speech and warmongering via his recommendation algorithm. This is not only immoral, this is illegal. Zuckerberg is being sued, and I hope that justice will be served. And this means that if he is found guilty, I hope that he will be in jail. As Facebook whistleblower Sophie Zhang put it, Facebook has become complicit by inaction in this authoritarian crackdown. The effective decision was made not to prioritize it effectively turning a blind eye. Unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of the academic world, especially in AI research, is doing no better than the Facebook's directors. Too many of us are deciding not to prioritize the research against disinformation war campaigns, effectively turning a blind eye. Even though genocides have been facilitated by the hate speech amplified by all technologies, including in Ethiopia, where half of a million of people have been murdered, and while 5 million civils have been under siege for a year and a half, and are dying of starvation and of diseases. I am deeply deeply ashamed of my research community. By carrying on collaborations with organizations like Google and Facebook, by contributing to their dangerous technologies, and by not paying attention to the catastrophic side effects of our activities, we are behaving like criminals. In fact, it's worse than this. Again and again, when allocating research funds, attracting top students, presenting at conferences, deciding research directions, or reviewing research papers, too often right now, scholars are way too happy to promote the state-of-the-art performances in unrealistic settings where no disinformation war campaigns is attacking our systems, and without consideration for the consequences of the actual deployment of our 
technologies. Our research is encouraging and accelerating the deployment of extremely dangerous technologies prior to any thorough testing and without any security analysis. This is criminal. Whenever you, as a scholar, are cheering for insecure AI research progress, please account for the fact that, in Sophie Zhang's words, you are effectively turning a blind eye on the millions of human tragedies that are occurring worldwide because of unsafe AI systems through recommendation algorithms especially, that are vastly amplifying hate and violence. Worse, whenever you beat the state of the art with an ever more complex algorithms, you are making it harder still for AI safety researchers like me to design secure algorithms with comparable performances. In fact, our papers have repeatedly been labeled as restrictive merely because they require an overhead compared to the state-of-the-art algorithms. I kid you not, academic research, especially in machine learning, is too often vastly more obsessed with performance than security, to the point where sacrificing some amount of performance has sometimes even been regarded as unrealistic by scholars I've talked to. Unrealistic. This is really upsetting. On this basis, I'd argue that most papers in machine learning should be rejected because they are mostly based on the unrealistic assumption that all of the data are drawn independently from some mystical unknown distribution and that all of the participants to the system are fully honest and trustworthy. Alarmingly, every day, there are dozens of new proposed algorithms which are optimized for this unrealistic framework and are planned to be deployed in large-scale applications. And yet, there's only a handful of researchers who do the work of studying the vulnerability of these algorithms and that are asked to make them secure without harming performance. This is absolutely not sustainable. This will inevitably lead to the extremely dangerous security failures of the world's most influential information systems, which disinformation war campaigns are already happily leveraging to further divide societies and increase tensions. But what's most frustrating to me is to see all the brilliant minds who could be so valuable through the research on making algorithms secure, but who are currently being drawn towards either useless or towards actually dangerous research. If you are doing research in math or computer science, I am begging you, please consider the externalities of your activity. In particular, please note that whenever you ask your collaborators to work on a given topic, you are also telling them not to work on potentially significantly more important topics. Please, please at least don't make them turn a blind eye on the suffering caused by our research activities. Instead, please consider contributing to research programs that aim to fix the disinformation and hate crisis, like our Tunosol project. To recall, Tunosol is an online platform designed by the nonprofit Tunosol Association whose goal is to collaboratively and securely identify and amplify top quality content of public utility. There are so many research directions that are so important, but that we are failing to address simply because we lack the funding and the manpower to tackle them. In fact, even if you are not a researcher, we desperately need your help to contribute to augment our public data set of humans' ethical judgments. I am begging you, please help us make this a valuable data set for machine learning researchers to finally redirect their attention away from pointless or dangerous research and towards the design of actually safe and ethical algorithms. This is 
so important to combat the massive spread of hate and disinformation and to prevent the proliferation of dangerous wars with potential weapons of mass destruction. You can also help us by making financial donations to pay off fantastic developers, but also more simply by understanding our approach and by contributing to make it known and to explain it, especially to your entourage, or by answering questions on Discord or on all the social media platforms. We desperately need all the help we can find. Because as Anastasia explains it so well, combating disinformation war is not merely about protecting the current victims of the current wars. In fact, you don't need to be altruistic to be terrified by the consequences of this line of research. Whatever country you are living in today, even in Switzerland, you should be terrified by the rise of hate and violence, especially because of COVID anger-driven misinformation, or because of the upcoming enormous economic crisis, or because a nuclear foreign power might eventually come after your country. If you don't do it for the millions of homeless war victims in Ukraine, in Ethiopia, or in Yemen, please do it at least for your own sake and for the safety of your relatives. Please renounce research on performance. And instead, please consider using your career to actually help amplify and secure truth and peace. I am begging you. The future of humanity is at stake.